by faith. Could you please stand to your feet? We welcome the people that is in the building as well as our online audience. There's a simple message from God in the Bible, and it says, no word from God will ever fail. Can we please pray? Lord, we thank you for your word in our lives. Your word brings us happiness, peace, joy, and your word also brings training and correction. We come to you this morning and we ask that your word will never fail us to help show compassion to the ones in need and may your word be the ones that we always turn to. Father, we just thank you for everything, for all your words, that your word continue to build us up, that your word continue to help us show people what they need in life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you are glad to be here this morning? How many of you are glad to truly be here this morning? And most of all, how many of you are glad that God rescued you? He reached down and grabbed you from wherever you were in and, and he saved you and he set you free. So we're going to sing that on this morning. We're going to make that declaration. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. You have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. And I'm never going back. Oh, oh, you have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. And I'm Hallelujah. You have rescued my life. And I'm never, I'm never, never going, going back. Oh, 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 you have. You have rescued my life. Thank you, Jesus. You have rescued my life. And I'm never, My response is Hallelujah. You're my redeemer. Hallelujah. Say my response is Hallelujah. You're my redeemer. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You have rescued, you have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. And I'm never, 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 never go.
one more time. Everyone say, I lift my hands. I lift my hands. And talk. I worship and adore you. I worship and adore Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. That I love you, God. Lord, I love that I you. praise you. More that I worship you more than anything. Come on and let's make that declaration again. Say, I love you, Jesus. I love Jesus. I worship you. Just want to tell you want and declare to tell you. that I love you. Lord, I love you yeah. oh, 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 oh. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship you.
we thank you for the rescue and we thank you Lord that we can make that declaration that we love you more than anything than life itself more than anything more than our kids more than our family more than the country because of you that we have the ability to have all these things oh God but most of all we thank you for the gift of eternal life and, and eternal life with you so we thank you God over to your name at this time, we would ask that you greet your neighbor. Just tell them good morning to the left, right, in front, and behind. Hallelujah. And as you do that, you can take your seats. And if you would, please place your attention to the screen for um, some highlight videos of 2022. Thank you. imagine that was just what you did in December and so some of the items you saw in our end of year praise report and it told you it showed you all the things we did for the whole year but then there are some things that we did that was in addition to the praise report that uh, we did in December so God has just been so amazing to our ministry and we're just so grateful for such a, a giving congregation so give yourselves another hand um, I'd like to, especially first-time visitors, want to give you some heads up that here at Overcoming by Faith, anytime you see a person without a mask, that means that they've tested within the past 24, 48 hours. Uh, we are still following the suggestions by a wonderful medical team that we have, and so we're trying to keep everyone as safe as possible. So that's why we ask you to still wear a mask. But if you see someone walking around like myself or a pastor or some of us, still have it if, I, if I'm talking to somebody too long, but... Um, that means that those individual singing, singers and all that they've tested within the past 24, 48 hours for, for our protection and for yours. So let's thank God for our medical advisors. And I'll mention a little bit more about uh, something that's going to happen medically here in our house in a few moments. But I'd like to take an opportunity to welcome any first-time visitors that we have in the house. Um, we have a special gift for you. We're not going to make you stand up and say words or do anything. But we want to give you this cute little gift. Come on, everyone, say, oh, isn't it pretty? Of course, anytime you see something super cute, that means Miss Bishop did it for us. And so it's a special gift. And inside this gift, is some things that we absolutely love. It has our basic information, of course, but it has one of our favorite books, and it's our current daily devotional is in here, along with some other wonderful treats. So if you are a first-timer, we'd like to bless you with this gift. So all you have to do is, from your seat, just wave your hand, and the ushers will bring the gift to you. Any first-timers? Amazing. 
thank you so much for coming. We are just so honored to have you in the house. And we'd love to maintain contact with you. So if you can help us out, hopefully in this box, Ms. Bishop, do we have the first time visitor card in here? Okay, of course, I should have known she'd be on point. Inside the box is a first time visitor card. And we'd love for you to complete the card and just leave it at one of the giving stations or give it to one of the ushers so we can maintain contact with you. Tell you, thank, tell you again, thank you for coming and let you know some of the various things that's going on here at Overcoming by Faith. So thank God for the cute box. No telling what kind of treats we're going to have in there next week. Now, we have a lot of wonderful things going on here at Overcoming by Faith. And we I know it's a brand new year, but we have a lot going on. So let's see. Right now, uh, let's see. Bring up that little slide because I think the first thing that's going to happen here is that we have, oh, after service, our food trucks. We're going to have Pops Grilling. Um, and also we have my favorite cake ever, and it's Love by the Pound will be on campus. Now, last time you bought everything she had, so we asked her to bring some more so that overcome the 11 o'clock service won't be robbed. Okay, the next thing that we have coming up, you guys can just keep it going. Our AIM Youth Sunday, AIM will have a session today at 11 o'clock in the cafe, along with, I think also we have mom to mom is going to come up in a moment and we have mom to mom so we're going to have that again every single um, month now mom to mom is going to be in person and zoom and then also the aim teen ministry will be in person and on zoom and they will be at 11 o'clock in the youth building uh let's see just keep it going oh pastor's bible study is going to begin on wednesday so those of you come on out he's going to be teaching a three-part series called boundary lines and so it's going to be really good those we'll have people in person and also for those who can't come it will also be streamed and um we have a lot of other wonderful small groups that are going to be coming up uh, from uh, singles, marrieds, all those things. Now, with the uh, Bible study that's going to be on Wednesday, there's going to be a teen session. Well, OBF kids will have a session on Wednesday. So parents, if you wonder, where are my kids going to go? They can come on out. And then also AIM will have a midweek session while pastor is in uh, the Bible study on Wednesday for the next three weeks. Let's see. Okay, this is the part I was talking about, the COVID vaccinations. Uh, CORE had asked, this is an organization who does the vaccinations for us. They are going to um, come back and be with us on Friday, and they're giving vaccinations from uh, 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Now, I know um, some people say, well, I'm just tired of all the vaccinations. I'm tired of the mask. I'm tired of all of this. Yes, we. I am too, but we have to do what we have to do. We, uh, and so we want to protect ourselves and protect those that we love. And so they are offering the vaccination again. Now, this particular one is not incentivized. Where there's not, They're not giving you $100 for your test for, for the shot. You need to get the booster because you love yourself and you love your loved ones. And so that particular one, uh, there is a new variant that is that is out now that is uh, impacting a whole lot of people. And uh, you may not know people who had tested positive since the holidays, but I can name some. And so um, please, please make sure you continue to be protected. Wear, wear your mask whenever you are in it. They claim that if you're in an enclosed space and you're in that space for more than 15 minutes, I know my doc, one of the doctors said, even if you buy them for more than five minutes, you know, you need to make sure you are protected. And so we are offering, uh, they actually contacted us and said, because the numbers are going up, could you please allow us to come back to your facility so we'll have it uh, you need to read, go to the core site in order to register but you can go to our web page and, and uh, you'll see the information or you can this is one of those where you can even walk in anytime from uh, 12 to 4 o'clock Okay, and did I miss anything else? Oh, we have uh, your info update. That's the one. This is the time of year where we ask you to please make sure we have your email and mobile number and all of that stuff. And this is also the form that we have. And we'll have uh, some helpers that will help you with that in the overpass where we have to know even your mobile carrier in order for you to get a text message from us. Uh, that is that one thing. 
the young adults in the house, we finally can, you can finally go on a trip. You haven't been on them in a long time. So, oh, I got a couple young adults saying hallelujah. And so you can finally go on a trip. And so you're going to go to Universal Studios. There is an event that's called Rock the Universe. And so uh, we would love for you to jump. We got a charter bus for you and, and allow you to just have fun for the day. Now, everybody else may say, what about me? It's coming. But at least we're going to test out with the young adults because they're the ones who haven't been anywhere in a long, long time. And so, again, you have the uh, most of the young adults know how to work this where, you know, just aim your phone at the little scan me code. And um, and then you can. This is Rock the Universe. You just aim your phone at the scan me code and it will register you. And there will be uh, more of these flyers outside in the overpass and in the hallway. And someone will be there to help you out. Okay, and I think I have one more. Oh, just for dads. Okay, that's coming back up. Um, is it starting again in January? I'm looking for. Oh, there you are. Yes, yes. Okay, that's with Donald Bunch. He has a session for just for dads. They eased that one in on me. I didn't see that one earlier. Okay, and the other one that I'm still waiting on is. is I'll just say what it is. Arts ministry. It's that time of year where we are recruiting for singers and dancers and mime and musicians and all those wonderful individuals. Some of you are sitting in the seats and you're hiding your artsy talent. Shame on you. Use it for the kingdom. And I'm one of those people where if you have a passion for something, we'll teach you how to do it. Your family members may claim you can't sing, but if you love Jesus, you can sing all you want. Just sing. If you desire, if you know how to play air guitar, but you want to learn how to play the guitar for real, come on, we'll teach you how to convert from the air guitar to a real guitar. And so, just like our guitar player, um, 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 Terry, hit, hit, a, hit a one or something over there. Make sure y'all have got Terry on. Terry, hit a something. He's going to be, he's going to be the guitar teacher, so you won't have to do air guitar. Isn't that a blessing? So come on, you don't have to play an air guitar like da, 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 da. He's going to teach you how to play guitar We're going to have a bass guitar We're going to have piano, we have percussions We have mime, we have dancing We have, of course, vocalists All of that is happening during Arts Lift Weekend And so it's going to be the week of of January 20th through the 22nd. Again, you can go to our website at, um, and go down to our arts page and you will see how to register there. Or we have registration options as you leave in the lobby. Okay, I believe that's it. You, you see a lot is happening at Overcome by Faith. Come on, give the Lord a hand. It is wonderful, wonderful. And all of our arts ministries are designed for all ages. So it's not just a grown folk place. You know, it's for everybody. Come on, say everybody. Everybody. Well, I tell you, I'm impressed. Give them all a big hand. The staff is amazing. The volunteers, the leadership team. I told them to plan everything. And they've been planning, as you can see, everything. We are not going away. We're going in a different direction. We're meeting differently. We're going to meet in small groups. We're going to meet in ways that connect us better. Um, I was laughing when she was talking about the trip. We paying for the bus. So y'all know we love you. We got a charter bus for you, young folks. We're going to take you over there to that. What did they say they're going again? They're going to, where is it? Universal? I think it's great. I, we, we have, um, they, they, got, they, have more, they have more than they've told you. I was impressed today. I, we had some executive staff meetings this week, and I was impressed. Uh, and I want to say this. Diane has done a fantastic job. She has truly uh, proven that she deserves the title. Give her a big hand. I'm very impressed. Come on, give her a big hand, people. She has been amazing. And let me just say, you don't get a job with me because you're my wife, son, or daughter. You get a job with me because you can do the job. And if she couldn't do the job, I told her you can go home and you know, go to the spa, whatever you want to do, and love me. But if you want to work for me, you have to be able to W-O-R-K, work, and do your job. And I say that in love, don't mean anything by it. It's not fair to you uh, to just have somebody that looks cute up here. But when you look at the work, 
and the results, you say, wow, what a great job. And then when you go to the events, you see the quality of the work and the, the staff and, and all. And you were, you were kind to your staff. Let me say this to you. You gave them all a 7% raise this year. Give them all a big hand. Come on, you gave them all a 7% raise. You gave them a 5% raise, 5% raise in cash that they got on last Thursday. So they're all dancing and shouting. 5% of their salary plus, come on, clap your hands, come on, you gave it to them, right? And they get another 2% in July, so I'm, I'm in June rather, I'm happy, so I told us 7%, and I'm, you gave them 5% last year, you gave, I mean, I can go down the road, 401k, matching funds, you've been kind, faithful, there are adjustment raises coming, making sure people are being paid equitably, I just think it's amazing, I'm thankful that we are a church that cares about our people, and we have a tremendous volunteer team. We have a lot of folks that work here for free, give their time. Can we give them all a big hand? They make it all happen. Come on, amen. So I don't talk long. Stand on your feet. I'm going to pray because I can say a lot. So I'm going to force myself to get, get on down the road here. Church takes too long. Preachers talk too long sometimes. And you get bored. So what I'm going to do is get to the point today and say thank you for giving. Thank you for serving. Thank you for making it possible for us to do what we do. I want to thank all of the people here who work and make it happen. I believe that God wants to bless our church and help us to reach people in new ways. Thank the digital audience. Thousands of you watch us. Over the holidays, thousands watched. It was amazing. I mean, literally, it was thousands. I am so thankful. And then you gave good. Can you say amen to that? Come on, say amen to that. Isn't that amazing? Without, without a whole bunch of, without a bunch of trickery and manipulation and saying a whole bunch of fancy words, I just said, look, we're in this together, and you have to do your part. Don't just be a looky-loo. Jump in the fight. You may not have what you want to give, but give what you can give, and give it consistently. Say that word consistently. That's the key. So that you can do amazing things. When they tell you later some of the groups we're going to support, I'm really proud. I mean, I'm just proud. I don't want to get the rambling, rambling off here, but you're giving away thousands of dollars this year. You're not just taking in money. You got some wonderful things on the board. So lift your hand. Let's pray and let's believe God. Father, I thank you for the giving of your people today. As we honor you in our tithes and offerings, we understand the power of giving. We understand the difference that giving makes. It helps us to do good work. It helps us, Lord God, to make a real difference, not just talk about things, but do something. I pray, God, for you to bless us and help us and touch those who have never tithed, never honored you. If they get a dollar, give you a dime. You said there's something about being specific in my target. They may not can give a tithe. They may can give a half of it. But whatever they can do, let it be, God, from their heart. And let it be a, let it be a gift that says, I am in the fight with you, Lord. But not only to us, but may they learn to give to others. May they learn to give to where there's need and they have the resource. Do something, I pray. And then, Father, I pray for them to prosper. I pray for them to learn to be savers, that they learn not to just make money, give money, but they learn how to save money so that when they have a need, they can save themselves. I speak that over their life in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for what you're going to give. God bless you. And here's what's going to happen at the end of the service. There's not going to be any buckets passed. That day is gone forever, uh, forever and ever. Uh, and did I say forever? Forever and ever. So if you want to give, you have to go to the give boxes at the back of the church, or you have to do it online. And I want to thank you that are watching online for giving. Thank you for doing that. We appreciate you going to the website or downloading the app. The app is the coolest thing in the world you want to get. And I just want to thank you for what you're, you're going to give. Now, having said that, uh, they're going to show you now how to give. There's a way we give here at Open by Faith. So please watch that. I'm going to come back and tell you about the Wednesday night and then share a message with you. You don't want to miss because it's called Fear, Trapped by Fear. It's a great sermon. Watch this first, though. Overcoming by Faith family and friends, thank you for your support and generosity as we continue to do the work that God has called us to do. It's time to receive our offering, and there are many ways that you can give. Visit the Overcoming by Faith website at overcomingbyfaith.org backslash gift. You may download the Overcoming by Faith app. You may mail your gift to P.O. Box 15789, Savannah, Georgia, 31416, or text the dollar amount to 912 307 3077. As you give, remember this declaration good seed sown in good soil. You can follow along with today's message by simply opening the Overcoming by Faith Ministries app. 
scroll down to sermon notes, and today's notes will open within the OBF app or open directly in the Bible app. Or if you are viewing online you can click the sermon notes button on the live stream page. If you are viewing on YouTube or Facebook, access the notes from the description area. Well, thank you. This coming Wednesday night, I'm just doing something I haven't done in a while. I'm doing a series of Wednesday night services. You heard me say Wednesday night, right? And it's going to be no longer than about an hour and 15 minutes. We are really working to make sure that our service times are tight so that you can come and go. And it's, we know kids are in midweek school and all that kind of stuff. So it's an hour and 15 minutes they're about. So, and I mean, you know, for us, it really means that. So in uh, the series I love, it's called Boundary Lines. There's a verse in Joshua chapter 1, verse 4, which basically told Israel, these are your boundary lines. These are the areas that you're to conquer. This valley, this, this river, this is their boundary line. You're not to conquer everything. You don't have to win and conquer everything. You just need to focus on these boundary lines. So the first teaching we're going to do in Joshua, and all you need is a Bible. You don't need any books, just the Bible. Some teachings I'm going to do down the road, you'll need a book with me. But it's going to be fabulous. A time of teaching, a time of Q&A, a time of discussion going to be great and it's going to start promptly at seven so make sure you're here either in person or online i hope you can come in person i really hope you can It'd be great and we're going to talk about things that you're not supposed to have repeat this with me so what i'm supposed to have what i'm not supposed to have and how to get what i'm supposed to have we're going to start with what you're not supposed to have because i think that's the myth that's what makes you depressed sometimes you keep dwelling on things. I'm supposed to be rich right now. No, you're not. That's not your money. That's Bill Gates' money. That's Warren Buffett's money. That's not your money today. That's Michael Jordan's money. That's not your money. Why do you think you're supposed to have everything? You're not supposed to be married. How do you know? You don't have a husband. You don't have a wife. You're supposed to be single like Jesus. Don't you want to be like Jesus? Come on, say, do you want to be like Jesus? He was single. So, I don't want to be like Jesus like that now. I don't want to be like Jesus. I want to be like, he want to be like Paul. Paul was single. Everybody wasn't married in the Bible. Sometimes that's not that's the last thing. Some of you got married and found out too. That was the last thing you should have done. Sometimes in life, you're not supposed to have that job. He said, they fired me. Yeah, you're not supposed to have it now. You're supposed to have another job. What are you not supposed to have? What are your boundary lines? Part of what gets us in trouble is you look across the road and you see that woman, you see that man, you, you want them, but they belong to somebody else. Can I get a second amen? I heard one. And then you get them and you know what you discover? I'm not supposed to have them. Where are the boundary lines? There's some things I'm not supposed to have and Christians aren't taught that. They're taught that they're supposed to have everything. Say it, believe it, confess it. Now let's watch this. How many of you have wanted something, got it, and was sorry you got it? Raise your hand. Come on, put your hand up. Sorry you got it. I mean, you can say, oh, yeah, I, I can name it. I wanted a job. I wanted to move to a certain city. But then there's some things you're supposed to have. There's some things that are yours, but they're not going to come to you unless you do certain things. You can want it all day long, but they will not come. You will not have order in your life. You not have organ. You, your, your family would be chaotic. Your money would be chaotic. Your emotions would be chaotic. You're supposed to have it, and there's a way you get it. And then, lastly, I'm going to show you in the last study how to get things. I'm going to show you how to get it. There are specific things that I've done in my life to bring better things into my life. I'm telling you, it's going to be a great study. Three sermons, three teachings, three Wednesday nights in a row, in person and digital. And I want to tell you, it's going to be great. So come on out. Wednesday night. Everybody give me an amen. Let's get to it, shall we? Bible open. Let's get to it. Get your notes open. Get your sermon notes out. And you, you showed you how to get the sermon notes. Uh, repeat the topic with me today, please. Say trapped, trapped. by fear. By say it again. Come on. Say trapped, trapped. by fear. We are taught as believers not to ever, ever admit we're scared. God has not given us a spirit of fear, so we like to say we are bold, confident, and courageous. And sometimes that's true. And sometimes in life, you need to declare boldly, I will not allow fear to dominate my life. 
because it can have a negative effect. But I think there's a balance. There are some things that are not designed for you. And to bring them into your life can be damaging to you. There are some battles you shouldn't fight. As a matter of fact, later on in the year, I'm going to do a sermon on this whole issue of how you fight the wrong things and end up creating for yourself pressures you don't have to have. But that's another sermon. But today, we're going to take a journey to Numbers chapter 13, verse 17. And there is an incredible moment in Israel's history where they get lost. In this series, I'm traveling down the road with Israel, the nation, and I'm looking at four specific facts about their journey. Number one, last week we talked about the fact that they were trapped in the wrong place. They were in a place called Egypt, and they weren't supposed to be there, but maybe five years or so. When Jacob, when Joseph, rather, brought them over from Egypt, he told them, basically, leave here. Don't stay. But they got, got comfortable, good jobs, good benefits, 401K, stock options, decided to stay. 430 years. 430 years. Somebody said, did they have stock back then? You follow what I'm trying to say. Exaggerating a little bit, but you get the point, that they stayed too long. And sometimes you can stay too long. You can stay in a career too long, in a community too long. You can stay in friendships too long. You're no longer at that level of relationship where you need to be talking about those things. And if you stay in that environment, you'll find yourself frustrated. So there comes a moment in your life when you have to say to yourself, I can't do this. I can't, I can't stay in this career. I need to change jobs. But they didn't. And so the layoffs came. Problems came. Eventually they were enslaved. And I talked about how you can be trapped in the wrong place. Secondly, this week we talk about being trapped in fear. And what was really tragic is this was the opportunity. You know, sometimes in life you get the chance. Everybody know about the chance, right? And it's, a, it's an opportunity for you, but if you're not careful, you'll miss it. So listen to this dialogue. It's in chapter, Numbers chapter 13, verse 17. Moses sent, Moses, when Moses sent, from, sent them to explore Canaan, he said, go up through the south. And on into the hill country. See what the land is like. I want you to notice this. See what the land is like. That was the assignment. Whether the people live there are strong or weak. Few or many. What kind of land do they live in? Is it good or bad? What kind of towns do they live in? Are they unwalled or fortified? How is the soil? Is it fertile or poor? Are there trees in it or not? Do do your best to bring back some of the fruit of the land. It was the season for the first ripe grapes. So they went up and explored the land uh, from the desert of Zion, Zen as far as Rehob uh, toward Labo, which you don't care about all that. Hum off. So they, this is the specific place and assignment that God gave to their people. Go and check it out. There were seven things you were to notice. The land. Repeat these with me, please. Say, check the land. Check out the people. Check out their strength. Check out their living conditions. Check out the soil. Check out the trees. And check out the fruit. That's it. That's your job description. Check these things out. Now, problem is, sometimes you get out of your job description. Do you know anybody ever did that? You ever seen somebody in your department that don't even work for you? You're trying to figure out, why are, you in, why are you in this area? You're supposed to be over there. You, you're over here telling us what to do, and you don't even work in this department. You're in maintenance, and you're over here in the medical area. You need to go back over there. See, So there's this moment in life where you realize sometimes you go beyond your job description. So what's interesting is they were never sent to determine if they could defeat these folks. They were not sent over there as, as, as um, military strategists. They were sent simply to check out the land, check out the people, check out the strength, check out the living conditions, check out the soil, check out the trees, and check out the fruit. And bring back some fruit, by, by the way. That's it. Well, the problem is they went beyond that. Look at verse 26. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. 
They reported to them and to the whole assembly who showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. Here's what they said. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit, but the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified, okay, so far, very large. We even saw the descendants of Anak there, real big guys. The Amalekites live in the, in, the, in, the, in the Negev or the south. The, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites live in the hill country. And the Canaanites live near the sea along the Jordan. Now, I want you to put this in context. It would be like saying, I went there and I saw some big old dudes. I saw some crips, bloods, gangbangers. That's, that, that's, what, that's what they're saying. Now, you wouldn't pick up on that, but when you said Hittites, Jebusites, and Amorites, them some bad people, and they don't like us. So all our enemies are there. Kung Fu people, wrestlers, sumo people. That's what they're saying. I want to paint a picture for you. I want you to understand. So the land does have milk and honey. That was good, right? The people are powerful. Okay, that's just true. That's not bad. The cities are fortified, very large. That's true. We told you to check that out. The descendants of Anak are there. Okay, that's true. The main enemies of Israel were there, right? Okay, we told you the Amorites, the Hittites. Okay, that's true. Watch this now. But the people are strong. But the men who have gone up with him said, we can't attack these people, verse 31, for they are stronger than we are. And that's when they went across the line. They were fearful. Now, what they've done is they've, they've made a strategic decision based on their own experience. They were not soldiers. They were not strategists. They got out of their boundary lines. And it's so interesting to me when I read this that I, I look back at my life and I can say I became fearful of things that I didn't understand and I had no reason to be fearful. God had it all worked out. Can I get an amen, somebody? Amen. I've been afraid of stuff because I couldn't strategically figure out how I was going to pay for this and do that. Case in point, this building. Case in point, this land that we own. Television equipment. The, I, I, I didn't know how I was going to do all this. And I can, I, can, I can prove it to you. When we first got on television, I've said this before, I felt led to get on television. I felt like I wanted to reach out, you know, through television. So you know what I did? I got the yellow pages out. Anybody remember those? Google on paper for the kids. And they used to, you get one, a big one, every, every year. And so I would, I went, opened the yellow pages, and guess what I looked under? Television. Okay, that's how you get on TV? That's a bad strategy, but it's where I started. See, God knew this poor soul don't know what he's doing. And then I decided to look under camera because I was going to get on television, so I needed what? Camera. Oh, boy, this is really bad. You can see the angels in heaven say, is he going to make it? <laughs> he's slow, he's slow, he's slow. And then what I started doing was calling all the people who sold cameras. This is bad. What are you going to say to them? Hi there, my name is Ricky Temple. I want to know, do you have any TV cameras? And so the people were confused. They said, what you going to do with this? I'm going to get on TV. <laughs> Come on, let it out. It's all good. You can say, everybody say, slow, slow, he's slow. You know, I mean, I, you got to start somewhere. So that's what I did. And you know what's interesting? I called around and called around and called around. And finally, one guy said, what are you trying to do? He, just got, he said, what are you trying to do? And he said, I said, well, I'm trying to, I want to get on television. I want to do this. And he said, he said, well, you, you want, you're trying to tape a show? Yes, I'm trying. See, he, he got me there. You're trying to tape a television show? Yes, I am. He said, well, call cable. And I called cable. And it was back in the days off of off Abercorn. And I said, um, hi there. You know, you're talking to your professional voice. Hi, I'm Ricky Temple. And I want to uh, talk to you about uh, taping for a television program for me. And so they said, well, hold the line. And so I held on, and a guy named Wayne Nix, who worked at cable, answered the phone. I saw Wayne about two months ago. And Wayne said, can I help you? I said, my name is Ricky Temple, and I want to 
talk to you about a television program and, and taping one for me. I think I want to be on television. He said, really? He said, what's the name of your program going to be? And how long would it be? When you don't know, you just fake it. Step to the side. I made it up on the spot right there. I said, it's going to be called the Word Alive broadcast. How long will it be? Step aside again. 30 minutes. I just made it up as I went. He said, well, we can do that for you. I said, what did you say? <laughs> he said, we can do that for you. I said, you can do that for me. And, you know, you step aside, didn't you? Now, what's the next question I'm going to ask? How much? You know, you've been there. How much? How much? So I can go back on it. Um, how much will that be? Wayne said, nothing. Hallelujah. That's the best price in town. Zero. He said, would you come down? And I came down and put on my suit and my tie. You know what I mean? Go down there and look professional. And I said, this is how Mr. Wayne Nixon. We talked. And he says, well, I'll make you a little set, a little ugly screen. He made a little screen. It, it, it worked. And then I, I had to pull the pieces together. And then I went down to, I said, well, okay. He said, you need an opening and a closing. I said, an opening and a closing. What does that mean? What does that mean? And he told me. And I said, he said, I said well, um, do you have any idea where I could find possibly get an opening and a closing? You know, so he said, well, go, go down there uh, to uh, Wayne, to, to Doug Weber. No, and he said, go, go over to Calvary Baptist Church. But they were the ones that had the, 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 fr the free time. They managed the free cable time because they had free cable time they had to give to the community. I'm going on and on, but hang with me. That to, get, to help people that were in the community get on television. It was free, free time. And so, but Calvary managed it. So I went over and I spoke to the uh, pastor, uh, assistant pastor of Calvary at the time, and he leaned back. He said, so you want to get on TV? I said, yes, sir. I said, I do. And he said, well, I tell you what, you're going to need, you need an opening and closing, right? I said, yeah. He said, well, go call Doug Weathers. Now, you know who Doug Weathers was. Doug Weathers was the, the lead WTOC anchor, biggest anchor in town. So I thought, put on my other suit with a nice attire. <laughs> <laughs> And I went over to TOC and I rang the bell. I said, hi there, I'm Ricky Temple. And I'd like to talk to Mr. Doug Weathers, please. And Doug Weathers saw me. And he looked at me. He says, are you trying to get on TV? I said, yes, sir, I'm trying to get on television. But I need an opening and a closing. So he said, you know what I'm going to do for you? I'm going to help you. I'm going to call Bob Duncan. So he went next door to the man who does the production over there at WTOC and said, I want you to put this guy an opening and closing together. And they did it. They put this thing together. The word, Welcome to the Word of Live broadcast. And they had me flying in boxes. You couldn't tell me I wasn't a star. You couldn't have told me I wasn't a celebrity. So I took my, I took my, my tape back over there. It cost $35 to $50 for one tape. You know, that was truly God helping me then. I went and took that tape. They put it together for me. Wayne edited it together, and there I was. And the first time I was on, Diane was sitting on my left, and she said, what you going to do? I said, I'm going to fake it till I make it. <laughs> I said, they don't know. <laughs> they don't know. They don't know. And I said, what you going to preach on? I said, the book of James chapter 1, how to deal with difficult times. And I just started talking. Hi, my name is Ricky Temple. Welcome to the Word of Life broadcast. Today we're going to talk about how to deal with difficult times. Turn to James chapter 1. And I started my journey. Let me tell you something. I didn't have the strategy, but God had the strategy. I didn't have the plan, but God had the plan. And it all started with the yellow pages. I looked like a fool calling them people asking about TV and getting on TV. I didn't know what I was doing. I've never been on television. You know, the only time I've been on television is when the cameras come to the schools and you always you the kid trying to get in. <laughs> and then one time I went to, <laughs> the next time I was close to being on TV, I came in town. I ain't going to say no names, but I came in town and they had one of them, uh, what they, when the preachers all get together, I had just come into Savannah and they had one of those uh, news, news, what is it? You know, when they call the news people and ask them to come in and uh, news conference, press conference, press conference. And so I, I went in, and I was standing by the pastors, and I was new in town, just started, young, my 20s. And so I was standing there, and I was standing right on the front row, right on the front. I said, oh, boy, I'm be on TV. Press conference, see the cameras. And then another pastor, <laughs> he came to, excuse me, young man, and stepped in front of me. I love him. He did, he did, and he stepped in front of me. But don't worry, in the end, he looked at me more than I looked at him. Come on, say amen. In the end, see, in the end, in the end, God had a strategy and a plan. See, they went to the promised land, 
and forgot that you may not have the plan, but you've got God on your side. You may not know how you're going to get this to work, but come on, God has a plan for you. And so here they are all, all going, out, going all off the, off the cliff. And, and so we can't attack these people, verse 31. They are stronger than we are. Telling them all, you already know what you don't have. Don't dwell on that. And then the Bible said, verse 32, they did something dangerous. In verse 32, they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land that they were explored. They said the land we explored it devours those living in it. All the people we saw of great size. Now, what gets you in trouble is listening to everybody. Now, you know, if you had known me then and, I, and you were talking to me, what would you have told me? What you doing? Don't call these people asking about no camera. Camera? What are you doing? You know, you ain't ever been on television. You're not going to be on. You know how much it costs? You can't afford it. And you would have been right. But God had a plan for me. And in verse 30, Caleb didn't know how, but he knew what. Sometimes you don't know how, you just know what. I, I don't know how. I, look, I was raised in, a, in an environment, and I lived in apartments all my life. We never owned property. I never, I never lived in a house that I owned until I got married and grown. Never. I didn't know what a closing was. When we first bought the first building on East Broad Street, I tell you the story. The lawyer said to me, we're going to have a closing. He named the date, and I hung up the phone. I didn't know what that man meant. So I called him back, got back in my deep voice. You know, you don't you know, you're just talking that deep voice. Uh, what do you mean when you say closing, when you say closing? <laughs> Come on, fake it till you make it, man. I didn't know. I said, he laughed and told me. I, I didn't know what it was. I never had one. Caleb didn't know what. But he knew who. He didn't know how, but he knew God spoke it. Sometimes that's all you have. Watch verse 30, 32, 30. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and take. That's the key word. Say take. Come on, say it again. Say, and do what? One more time. Say that word again. Take. It's not going to change until you take possession. Your life will never get better until you do what? Take possession. Your health is not going to get better until you do what? Take possession. Until you take possession. Take possession of your finances. Take possession of your life. He understood. Caleb said, yeah, it's big. There they big. But I believe we can take them. We're going to take possession. Take possession of the land. For we can certainly do it. We can do this. We can do this. But the men who had gone up with him, said, we can't attack these people. They're stronger than we are. And then he goes on, and then they spread among the Israelites a bad report among the land they had explored. They said, the land we explored devours those living in it, and all the people we saw there are of great size. Notice, it's all, you spend all your time talking about what somebody else has. We're like grasshoppers in the eyes of these folks, they said. Who asked you? Who asked you? Who asked you what we can't do? We already know what we can't do. If you're broke, do you know it? <laughs> if you're broke, you know you're broke. Well, you don't have to tell me that. I got that. I knew I didn't have a camera. I knew I didn't have any television experience. I knew. I knew I was a rookie. But I believe that God said I can. And I believe if he says I can, I can. Come on, say amen, church, if you're hearing me. I can. And, and I'm telling you, that's, that's, that's not hype talk. That's what, he, that's what happened. So now I want to give you four, three things that they did that I think will help you. Three things that they did that were life-changing. Because they were trapped now in fear. Two guys tried to help them. Joshua and Caleb. Have you ever been the only one? Have you ever been the only believer? Have you ever seen people making a bad decision and you know it's going to lead to bad options? That's what's about to happen. Bad decisions. Say that with me, please. Come on. Bad decisions lead to, come on, say lead to bad options. Let's try it again. Say bad decisions lead to bad options. 
Some of you right now, you're an option problem. You know what I'm talking about. Because you made some bad decisions. You made new decisions. And I want to show you three things that I think stand out to me that will help you deal with those fears when they come up on you like this. When you're tempted to, to not believe and not try, three things. Give a name to your fear. Say it. I'm afraid of being alone. I'm afraid of not ever having an opportunity again. I'm afraid. Say it. There's something about saying what intimidates you. It helps you deal with it. If you are not careful, you'll be so dominated. It's okay that they said what they feared. The problem was they concluded they could never get over it. They were right. They were bigger, stronger, all that's true. You're right. I didn't have the money, the means of the time. When we bought this property, I didn't have the money, the means of the time. This property was $33,000 an acre. I didn't have $33,000 at that time. And it was amazing how in the middle of that season, the issue was that I knew what I didn't have, but I didn't allow my fears to stop me from getting what I could have. And so what I did was I worked on getting four acres, then five acres, and I worked on making sure that I saved some money, and I began to work my, what I call work the pieces. But I have to name what's intimidating me, and it was intimidating. And there's a lot of things that I've done in my life that are intimidating. And some of you right now, I don't know where you are, I don't know who you are, but you're intimidated by something. Something has got you cornered emotionally, and you're trapped in fear, and you're paralyzed. Name it. I'm afraid of failing. Name it. I'm afraid of being embarrassed. Name it. One of the major reasons why people don't like getting in front of people speaking is because they're afraid they're going to be embarrassed. You know what I say? Hey, if I didn't do a good job, I'll try next time. I, 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 I speak to myself. Temple, do not allow yourself. Right now you're intimidated. Stop it. I, the, some of you never admitted what it is that keeps you cornered where you are. Say it. I, I have no problem with that. These folks said they're giants, they're stronger. They're, all that's true. Now what's God going to do? That's the question. Second thing I want you to do is to give power to your faith. Caleb and Joshua tried to give power to their faith. They tried to step up and say, no, don't, don't give in to this fight here. But they, they didn't. Listen to them. Who have, you shouted, who have you shouted down in your life? Who's tried to lift you up, but you keep pushing them down? They ignored Joshua and Caleb. They totally ignored them. Ten guys said no. Two guys said yes. The majority is not always right. And if you listen to the majority all the time, you will never accomplish a lot of things in your life. I have no business being here. I was raised by a single parent who never made a lot of money. There's no way I should have finished college. There's no way, no way at all. I never thought, I never thought much about it. I lived down the street from United, USC. University of Southern California. I used to drive my bike through there. But I never knew one college student. I never dreamed of coming to this university. I never dreamed of any kind of degrees. I didn't. My mother talked about going to college, but I didn't have an understanding of what that even really meant because I didn't know any college students. I didn't know any college professors. I grew up around the Crips and the Bloods and the Hoover Groovers and the Gang Bangers. That's where I could have been. I grew up surrounded by all kinds of negative influences. That's what I could have been. I had friends who used to steal cars. I, used to, I, had, people, I had people I knew who did things that were bad. They're in prison. Some of them died selling drugs. That could have been me. That could have been me. One more time, that could have been me. How in the world did I get here? How do you get here? See, I want you to understand, there, there are moments you look at your life and you don't see the potential. But God sees it. God sees what you can become. But if you get trapped by fear and you allow it to lie to you and you allow yourself to be controlled by it, you'll never, ever get free.
Here's the last thing. Number one, give a name to it. Say what it is that you're intimidated by. Number two, don't give power. Give power to your faith, not to that fear. Then here's the last thing. This is the most important, one of the most important things. Spend time with people who believe in your promised land. You got to get with people. Come on, say amen. Come on. You got to get with people. That's one of the reasons why you should come to church. That's one reason why you should be here online with us today. You're around people who believe in the promised land. Does anybody believe in the promised land here? Yes. Come on, do you believe in it? If you do, I want you to stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. If you want those people to believe in the promised land. God brought them to the border. But when they got there, they got trapped by fear. They allowed somebody to put something in their minds that, that stopped them in their tracks. You let somebody tell you you're not beautiful? Who is that person? Who, what gives them the right to tell you about yourself? I need you body inspectors and all you people, be, leave people alone. Leave people alone. People with dreams and ambitions, passions. There's something I never dreamed. I, 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 I was never around anybody married long. My mother never married anybody. She raised me as a single parent. I never was around anybody who was married long. I didn't know anybody that had a happy marriage. How did I get to be married 42 years? How, how, how? I didn't know a man. I, I, I'm, well, no, I'd be, I'll tell the truth. Tell the truth, Ricky Tip. Tell the truth. I didn't know a brother that could control himself sexually. All the brothers I was around was out of control. I didn't know any sisters either, by the way. Some of y'all said, that's right. That's a sad thing. He's, he didn't know a man, not one. Who you think they were with? Women. You know, y'all can show hide it real good. You know, you can just hide your lust so good you just look like hey. I've been here too long I know the stories I know the truth and I'm not throwing off on you I'm making a point he's able if I can just give him a chance get the yellow pages out and turn the pages make the call by faith I don't know how I'm going to get there God one million, two million, three million. I don't know what, what million, million. What, what, what do I know about a million? What do I know about a million? What, I ain't never. I never knew anybody. I never knew anybody. But if you allow people to talk to you and drown out your faith, you'll never get to where you're going to be. But I'm going to tell you something about Joshua and Caleb. They weren't just talking right. If you follow their lives, they live right. They were fully committed to God. Are you? Are you totally committed? You can give good advice, but are you living right? These are guys that believe the word. These are guys who live. And I'm going I'm to close this out with prayer today. Because sometimes you're fearful because you should be because you're not walking with him. You should be afraid to walk outside of his will. You should be afraid to stay out, stay, stay, stay where you are. You should be, I need to move. I need to get in alignment with the word. Some of you have good advice, but you're not really yielded. Let's pray. Every head, body, every eye closed. Father, I pray for us today as we leave. This hour and 15 minutes has been a good time. I pray we think through, pray through. Open our hearts to your message. God, fear has robbed some people of a lot of things. May this be the moment they get free. Fear has robbed them of victory and peace. May this be the moment they get healed from that. And I pray as we leave today that the word of God would live in their hearts and they would open their minds and hearts to a transforming word. And also pray, God, for those who don't know you, Savior, that this will be the moment they say, Jesus, come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. Come into my heart and transform my life from this moment forward. If you are a person and you say, Pastor Rick, I want you to pray for me because I know I need a change in my life direction. I want you right now, just raise your hand and say, yeah, pray for me, Pastor. Pray for me. I see a hand. I see another one. I see another one. Another one. Another one. 
I see one, another one. I see more. God bless you all. Thank you. If you're watching online, same thing for you. There's right there on your screen, it says, I raised my hand. I'm giving my life to Christ. I'm, I'm surrendering my life to Jesus. I realize that I need God in my life. I want to pray this prayer. Lord, let this be that moment where their lives come to you without fear, where they're not going to allow themselves to be trapped in any fear. They can trust you. They can serve you. They can take possession of the land that you promised them. Their lives can be better by surrendering to you. You died on the cross to free them. May this be that moment. And we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. I want to deal with another part of this next week. And I'm telling you, to me, this part, these next two sermons are really powerful. One thing I want you to think about, what is it like to be Joshua and Caleb? You did the right thing, but they messed up everything. Now you stuck in the wilderness for 40 years because of what they did. Have you ever been a victim of somebody else's foolishness? And how do you maintain a good attitude? In the next two sermons, I'm going to talk about that. I want to talk about what Joshua and Caleb, how they modeled for us living in a situation that they did not create. How they themselves found out a way to rise above it and not be controlled. They had a relationship that went bad and the relationship messed up their lives. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. And then what's really powerful in the last sermon, I'm going to talk about, it's called living in the wilderness, trapped in the wilderness. You're in a bad situation. How do you make the best of it? They were going to be in the wilderness for 40 years because of their rebellion. One day for every day they rebelled. And so how do you make a good situation out of a bad one? These next two sermons are going to answer those questions, and you want to make sure you tune in and you stay with us. And I'm so glad you're with us today. I want to say I'm glad you came. Are you glad you came? Come on, are you glad you came? Come on up. And Diane, I am super happy to see you with your great self. Tell us what you got going at the end of this today. Well, I'd like to remind those of you who prayed that uh, prayer of salvation, the angels in heaven are rejoicing. And so we want to make sure we give you some material that will help you in your new walk. So in the lobby and also in the overpass, we'd like you to grab this bag that says New Beginning. It has not only the devotional, but some, some basic information about the best decision you've ever made in your life, and that's to choose salvation. And so let's thank God for those individuals. And then finally, don't forget that every time we have a welcome in service, we have wonderful food trucks. Now, before I explain the food trucks, don't forget the next three weeks, it's online only. Come on, say online only. And our next in-person service is going to be the first weekend in February. So make sure you are checking out your links and all of that and sharing that information with everyone. But it will be online only for third and fourth weekend. Then on fifth weekend, we have some wonderful young adults who are going to be sharing the oh word. God. And that's going to be a be magnificent awesome. 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 Um, service. That's the one that we call our family weekend where kids doing praise and worship. The teens are doing praise and worship. And we have some young adults who have a special word talking about life's traps. It's going to be on fifth weekend. Okay, so don't forget online, third, fourth, and fifth Sunday, and in person again on first. But our food truck for today is we have Pops Grilling. And Pops Grilling, uh, you can you can actually get your food and have a seat in the overpass because we even have our wonderful outdoor heaters out there, or you can get it to go and eat in your car or eat when you get home. But Pops Grilling has a wonderful menu of ribs and chicken and and it has sandwiches, and it has these combos, and it has sides like collards and mac and cheese and all sorts of Sunday food. And so uh, it's going to be wonderful having Pops Grilling out there on today. And then I've been talking about my favorite dessert, which is um, Cakes by the Pound. This is actually one of our members who own Cakes by the Pound. And so today she has the mini pound cake. She has, she has mini cakes, and she has key lime, strawberry pound, German, Oreo, red velvet, and some tiny sweet potato pies that's in the ham mercy category. So, oh my God. I know you all, we try to be healthy. Just walk a few extra minutes. Eat a little bit. But, a little bit. <laughs> And so uh, those are our two vendors for today, Pops Grilling and Cakes by the Pound. Let me say this. One of the, love one of, by the Pound. Love, uh, one, one of the mistakes that churches make, in my opinion, is people don't come together and leave together. And when you come and leave together, you know, you can fellowship together because you're, you're not out of time. 
And one of the things that in this schedule, we will have live Wednesday services for the next three weeks. So I want you to make sure that you come out to the, that Wednesday service for me. I believe this is different, but I'm trying to last a long time. How many want to last a long time? Come on, amen. We're trying to last a long time. So we're trying to pace ourselves. Thank you for your patience. God bless you. Love you. You're dismissed. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Thank you for being with us here online. I appreciate you by the flowers. That flowers I see. Uh, and I see, uh, let's see, Georgette's here. I see, um, okay. Uh, yeah, I see. Uh, Christine. Christina Flowers. Yeah, I see. Okay. Good to have you with us today. Thank you all for being with us. I pray that this message has helped you today. And I hope to get to see you sometime in person or online. Email me if you have a question at pastor at overcomingbyfaith.org. Love you much. I'll see you next time. I'm going to hang with the people now. Bye.